Hello everyone, welcome back inside the PokerGo studio. This is the Big Blind. I'm Jeff Platt here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We have reached the semi-final stage of our ultimate test of knowledge on all things poker, Vegas, and gambling related. Let's take a look at this round three matchup. It is one intriguing group of players. First up, he is our number two overall seed in the semis. Everyone said he would lose, and I was like, no, not Norman Chad. He is the greatest. He is my best friend. I would never take shots at him. I'm not just trying to be nice to him in case he wins. Hey, Norman. Hi. It is great to have you here. I'm just going to jump right through that introduction. Joining Norman today, coming into the show, everyone said that the game theory expert was Barstool Alex Smitty. Jacob. And he has proven that so far. Second place in round one to move on. A qualifying second place finish in the quarterfinals. Now, Smitty, let me see if I have this correct. For the first round, you were in your mom's bedroom. The second round, maybe her living room. And the third round, you have made it to your own house and you're in the bathroom. Do I have that right? Yeah, moving day. Uh, second round wasn't my mom's living room, it was my mother-in-law's living room. Mother-in-law's living room, yes. got it. Curious to see what's on the agenda for the finals if you make it there. Ben Yu has been quite solid throughout the big blind. Second in round one to Alex Jacob. Then he knocks off Sarah Herring and Gary Gates in round two. Ben, what do you make of this draw today, taking on Smitty and Norman Chad? Not much of it, it's just another round. Just another round. Ben is just absolutely focused, absolutely locked in. Ben, Norman, it's the Norman, do you ben. feel the respect from Ben? No, I don't. I mean, you know, I know I'd always, I've always dreamed of making the big blind final six and never thought I'd get here this soon. And you say it's just another round. I mean, I literally haven't won a single hand yet in the first <laughs> round, so I deserve no respect. And Norman, right. we never thought you would get to the final six of the big blind either. So thank you all for joining us. Let us remind you of the rules. Our three players today will start with 10,000 in chips. We use a limit hold and betting structure before our pre-flop action begins. Players will see the hands category. They can base their betting on their confidence level in that category. Levels one and two consist of trivia questions from that topic. We have a question on the flop, a question on the turn, and a question on the river. Those questions will get progressively more difficult. Once you send in your answers, we'll open up another betting round. You know the answer? Might want to fire off a bet or a raise. You don't know the answer, but think bluff will get through. Fire off a bet or a race. If two or more players remain in the hand after the turn, we will go to the river, which will always be set up as a tiebreaker question. Level three, you'll go against the house, where you'll get a chance to bet some or all of the chips that you have accumulated. This is round three. It is the semifinals. If you win today, you move on to the finals. If you finish in second place, you have a chance. We're taking our top second place finisher to the finals as well. Make it to the finals and you are in the money. You win the finals, you take home $15,000. Second place worth 10K. Third place worth $5,000. Daniel, hit that music. Here we go. Level one, the blinds are 100, 200. You can bet 200 on the flop, 400 on the turn. Norman, the highest seed in this group. He has the button. Ben is in the small blind. Smitty's in the big blind. Let's take a look at your first category. Kid Poker, Daniel Negreanu. Now, Norman, before you bet, how'd your World Series of Poker Challenge versus Negreanu go? You know, I was winning until his final event, where since he has a lot of money, he played the 100K, where he busted, but they had a mm. second, a re-entry, so he put in another 100K, because he has 200K lying around. He finished second, and he blew past me. Why don't you get onto the category? Well, so you profited a lot, and he, he just profited barely more? I lost $17,000 and he won one point something million dollars. Can you get onto the category? Yes, I can. The category is Kid Poker, Mr. Daniel Negreanu himself. Norman, you can lead off our betting. You can raise, call, or fold. I'll call. He will call over to Ben in the small wine. You can raise, call, or fold. Oh, and here we go. Oh, oh a d different <laughs> set of glasses for Ben Yu. With the hoodie. Hey, there are no rules on the big blind uncovering your face. There we go. The Vogel saying scarf is in effect. Can barely I'm see any of I'm reading your soul, venue. Norman. I'm reading your soul, Norman. <laughs> and I sense weakness, so I raise. He is going to raise it up out of the small blind. Smitty, you can call, raise, or fold. Just call. Just we'll going call. to make the call, Norman. Uh, I, will, I will crawl out of respect uh, to Mr. Benyu. Benyu has taken off that disguise. Everybody goes to the flop. Let us see that flop question. Daniel Negreanu is second on the all-time live tournament earnings list behind what player? Answers, please. Now, we are not counting 
the Triton Million that is going on at the time of the taping. So Daniel is second behind what player not counting the Triton Million that is going on right now at the time of this taping. Does this include the Triton Million that's going on at the time of taping? It does not include the Triton Million that is going on at the time of this taping, but thank you for clarifying. That was not clear. All right, our answers are in. Ben, since you're in the small blind, you're first act. You can check or bet. Check. We'll check it over to Smitty. Check it. Check it over to Norman. I'll bet with the with the uh, codicil that I don't like being check raised. I'm betting. He is betting. Ben, you. I feel compelled now. I feel it goaded. I, I raise. The check raise from one it's Ben, you. It. Smitty, action on you. Well, we'll call it out. Smitty will call Norman. Uh, I'll call a punk. Norman will call as well before we see what our players said. Taking a look at the correct answer, that answer is... It's Justin Bonomo. He got there in 2018 after winning basically every single high roller. Bonomo, more than $45 million in career earnings. Checking in on our players. Who got that one right? Ben said Bonomo. That is correct. Smitty said Bonomo. That is correct. Norman Chad said Justin Bonomo. That is correct. Everybody gets it right. Everybody moves on to the turn. Let's take a look at this turn question. Before signing on with Poker Stars in 2007, Daniel owned his own online poker site called what? Answers, please. What was the name of the site Negranu owned before signing on with Poker Stars? All right, our answers are in. Ben, you are first act. You can check or bet. Check. We'll check it over to Smitty. Check it out. We'll check it over to Norman. Check raise me once. That's your fault. Check raised me twice. That's my fault. I bet. He's going to bet once again. Will you check raise again? Call. Going to make the call. Smitty. Call. Smitty will make the call as well. Let's see the correct answer. Full contact poker. Negranu said he was offered $170 million to sell the site, but that deal was nixed after the UIGEA was passed. Taking a look at what our players had to say. Ben said full contact poker. That is correct. Smitty said, KidPoker.com, that is incorrect. And Norman said, full contact poker, also correct. Ben and Norman move on to the river. Let us see that river tiebreaker. In what year did Daniel become vegan? Answers, please. We need an answer. All right, our answers are in. Before we look at what Ben and Norman had to say, let's take a look at the correct answer. That answer is... It's 2006. Checking in on what our contestants weighed in with. Ben Yu said 2003. Not a bad guess, just three years off the mark. Norman Chad said 2002. Not a bad guess, but four years off the mark. That means Ben Yu wins our first hand of the day, takes the chip lead. Ben at 12,400 in chips. Smitty and Norman tied for second with 8,800 in chips. For this hand, Ben has the button. Smitty is in the small blind. Norman's in the big blind. Let's take a look at this hands category. The World Poker Tour. Ben, you're on the button. You'll lead us off. Raise, call, or fold. Raise. Raise it over to Smitty. Fold. Smitty will lay it down. Norman. Call. Norman will make the call. So Norman and Ben will go to this flop. Name one of the two original hosts of the World Poker Tour. Answers, please. Season one, episode one. Who hosted? Just looking for one name. Norman Chad auditioned for this gig. They said, we are good, thank you. You know, well, I auditioned for America's Most Wanted. And they said, yep, you're in. All right, our answers are in. Norman, you are first to act. You can check or bet. Check. We'll check it over to Ben. Bet. Ben's going to call. fire bet. The snap call from Norman Chad. Let's see what the correct He's answer is. To the pot. We would have taken Vince Van Patten. We would have taken Mike Sexton. Tony Dunst now in the mix, replacing Sexton. Let's see what our players had to say. Norman said Mike Sexton. That's correct. Ben said Mike Sexton. Both of them get it right. Both of them move on to the turn. Let's see that turn question. Which notorious full tilt poker personality was the season one WPT player of the year? Answers, please. He won the World Poker Finals. He won the Party Poker Million. He won Player of the Year for the World Poker Tour in season one. All right, our answers are in. 
Norman, you are first act. Once again, you can check or bet 400. I wager. He will wager 400 over to Ben. Call. Ben makes the call. Let's see what the correct answer is. It's Howard Letterer. Notorious. Good word choice. Some people might have other word choices. Checking in on what our players had to say. Norman said Howard Letterer. That's correct. Ben said Howard Letterer. Both of them get it right. Both of them move on. Why don't you put on. Notorious in there? You don't put Notorious in there, he doesn't get it. He's a simpleton. I think Ben might have gotten that. Moving on to our I river think tiebreaker. That might be a trick question to get you Chris Ferguson instead, though. Aha! Ben, one of our writers. Just kidding. A river tiebreaker. Here we go. How many seasons of the World Poker Tour have aired on television? Answers, please. They have just started another season, but we want to know how many seasons have aired on TV. And we are not counting the Triton Million, which is going on at the time of this taping. How many seasons of the World Poker Tour have aired on television? All right, our answers are in. Before we see what our players had to say, let's take a look at the correct answer. That answer is 17. 17 seasons of the World Poker Tour have aired on television. We look at Norman's answer first. He said 16. Pretty good guess, just one off the mark. Can Ben, you nail it? You see the look on his face, he did not. Ben said 13. Norman, even though you're wrong, you are close. It is 17. It's they are, 16! They are currently on season 18. Really no reason to throw a fit here because you did win the pot. Taking a look at our chip counts. Ben's still on top with 11,400 in chips. Norman has 9,900 in chips. Smitty has 8,700 in chips. Smitty, you have the button for this one. Norman in the small blind. Ben in the big blind. Let's take a look at our next category. That category is horse racing. Let us hit the track or maybe the race book. Smitty, you're on the button. You lead off our betting. Raise, call, or fold. Call. Smitty makes the call on the button. Norman. Call. Norman makes the call as well. Ben. Check. Ben will check. Everybody goes to this flop question. What three races make up the American Triple Crown? Answers, please. The last Triple Crown winner last year, Justify, won these Watch three us. races. Watch us what color the sky is. Okay. What color is the sky? I'm going to answer that. That answer would be nice, but we would also like to know what three races make up the American Triple Crown. It's just, you know, you're giving them every opportunity. They're not even college educated. I don't want to hear where Ben went to school. Where'd he go? Berkeley, Stanford, DeVry? Where'd Smitty go to school? Everywhere. Everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> where did you go to school? You know, unfortunately, the University of Maryland, okay. Maryland's had a couple good years lately. Yeah, that's after I left. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, our I answers I left the are in. Norman, you are first to act. You can check or bet. Bet. Norman will lead. A donk bet. A donk bet right into Ben yes. Yu. Call. Ben will make the call. Smitty. Raise. Smitty will raise it up from the button. Back to Norman. I'll call. Norman makes the call. Ben. Call. Ben makes the call as well. Let's see the correct answer first. That answer is Kentucky Derby, Preakness Stakes, and Belmont Stakes. The three races in the Triple Crown. Who got it right? Norman got it right. Ben got it right. Smitty got it right. Everybody said the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, and the Belmont. So everybody moves on to the turn. Let's see that turn question. Use this type of wager to pick the top two finishers in a race in either order. Answers, please. Why don't you ask what color the grass is? What color is the grass? Who is in your research department? We have a massive research staff. What is this type of wager called when you pick the top two finishers in a race in either order? I think your uh, research staff consists of Brent Hanks drinking Natty Light. It'd be a bad sign if Brent Hanks was the only one on our research staff, I will tell you that much. All right, our answers are in. That means we open up another betting round. Norman, you are first to act. Bet. He will bet. Over to Ben. Hold. Ben will lay it down. Smitty. Call. Smitty will reluctantly make the call. Before we see really? what Norman and Barstool Smitty had to say, let's take a look at the correct answer. That answer is 
we would take a quinella, we would take an exacta box. We look at what Norman had to say. Norman said exacta, which we will not accept. Smitty said box, which we will also not accept. We were looking for an exacta box, but not one or the other. So Ben is out of the hand because he folded on the turn. So both Norman and Barstool Smitty will move on to the river tiebreaker. Norman, your thoughts? 16 seasons of the World Poker Tour, not 17. And I, 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 both of us got the damn thing right. Smitty, is Norman, Love the box. Is Norman would you say, a top, a top stoolie? That's not for me to decide. I think that's for uh, Barstool Nate to weigh in on. Going to let Barstool Nate weigh in on that one. Before we talk to Barstool Nate, let's take a look at this river tiebreaker. How much money was bet on the 2019 Kentucky Derby? Answers, please. This was a wild one. Ended in controversy. Maximum security finished in first, then was disqualified, and Country Horse became the winner. But how much money in total was bet on the 2019 Kentucky Derby? Closest to the correct answer will win this pot of 2,600. That would put Norman in the chip lead. That would put Smitty in second place. A lot of fingers going on over there. Also a lot of eyes. Our security team is watching Norman Chad very closely. It's just letting people know. All right, our answers are in. Before we see what Norman and Barstool Smitty had to say, let's take a look at the correct answer. That answer, $149.9 million. Let's see what our players weighed in with. We start with Norman. Norman said $158 million. That's about $8 million off the correct total. Not a bad guess from Mr. Chad. We go to Barstool Smitty. He said, he said 62 million dollars. That means Norman is closest to the correct answer. Norman takes that one down. Norman, do you know what a stoolie is? Yes, I do. I didn't know what a stoolie was a year ago, but now I do. Because Barstool has become so popular, yes? It wasn't because Barstool became so popular. It's because stoolies contacted me, and so I found out who stoolies oh. were. And they had very kind words for you? Uh, many of their words were single syllable, and the two syllable words were not much nicer than the one syllable words. All right, and on that note, that is a wrap on level one. We raise the stakes in level two. Next. Welcome back to the big blind, taking a look at the chip counts. Norman Chad, our chip leader, 11,500 in chips. Ben at 10.8K, Smitty at 7,700. What's on the line? Well, our winner today is in the money and moves on to the finals. Our second place finisher today might move on to the finals. We are taking our top second place finisher out of the two semi-final matches. Before we get to the start of level two, we had a brief discussion with the great Norman Chad about the question we asked about the Kentucky Derby. We asked how, mu how much money was bet on the 2019 Kentucky Derby. Norman informed us in a very polite manner that that year was most likely off. And so, after firing our massive research staff of 18 people, we brought in a whole new staff. That staff said it was the 2018 Kentucky Derby that we were referring to. Whoa, 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 whoa. So the whole question should be null and void then, because that completely threw off my mindset. And we'll take that to the judges I'm, at this moment. I'm dead serious. And the judges said, move on. Level two. <laughs> The blinds are 200, 400. That means you can bet 400 on the flop, 800 so on the turn. answer incorrect questions and it'd be okay? Like, I don't, I don't understand that. Norman has the like button. If it was, ben is in the small blinds. If it was 2018 lines. stated, my mind would have said a different number. <laughs> Barstool Smitty is in the big blind as we take a look at this category. Off strip, Vegas landmarks. Norman, you are on the button. You lead off our betting. You can raise, call, or fold. Call. Going to make the call on the button, Ben. Call. Ben makes the call. Smitty, you can check a race. Call or break start. Check. Jesus. Okay. It's Smitty. 2018. Ends. That question's seared in my mind. Now. He's he's all thrown <laughs> off. Smitty ends up with a check. Let us see our flop question. What street is considered the northern border to the Las Vegas Strip? Answers, please. If you go far north on the Strip, you will eventually run into this street. Answers, please. All right, our answers are in. Ben, since you're in the small blind, your first act, you can check or bet. Check. You will check it over to Smitty. Bet. 
Smitty will fire off a bet. Norman. I don't think I know this one. I don't think I know this one. I mean, I thought I knew it. And I know the, the, the law of the sea treaty defines the rights and responsibilities of uh, nations with respect and regard to the world's seas. But I don't know this one. I'll just have to call because if I fold, I'm definitely gone. So call, and then if I'm wrong, I'll lose the chips. Okay, I'll call. Ben, you, after that, what would you like to do? Call. Ben is going to make the call as well. Everybody's still in on this pot. Let's take a look at the correct answer. That answer is, it is Sahara Avenue. Checking in on what our players had to say. Ben said Sahara, that is correct. Smitty said Fremont Street, that is incorrect. Norman also said Fremont Street. So both Smitty and Norman get it wrong. Ben Yu wins our first hand, taking a look at the chip counts. Ben Yu, now our chip leader, 12,400 in chips. Norman Chad in second with 10,700 in chips. Smitty in third with 6,900. For this hand, Ben has the button. Smitty is in the small blind. Norman is in the big blind. Let's take a look at this category. Howard Hughes is Las Vegas. Remember back in the day, Howard Hughes, I mean, I don't remember. Norman does though. Ben on the button, you'll lead off our betting. You can raise, call, or fold. Raise. We'll raise it up over to Smitty. Fold. Smitty will lay it down. Norman. Why don't you get a job, son? You're well educated. You're healthy. You're young. Why are you taking money out of our pockets? Not going to let Norman Chad get to him. Just stay silent. Yeah, Stone face. He, 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 he called me down in a hand about five or six years ago, and then he just blabbed to the world about it, about how he outplayed me. Who doesn't outplay Fuck. me? Call. Fuck. The clock has been called. That definitely doesn't sound like me. <laughs> Nor Norman <laughs> has made the call. Norman call. and Ben will go to this flop question. Howard Hughes' arrival in Las Vegas and subsequent investments are often credited for ushering in the corporate era of Las Vegas casinos and ending what era? Answers, please. Hughes makes it to Vegas, starts investing. The start of the corporate era, that ended what era? All right, our answers are in. Norman, you are first to act. You can check or bet. I'll bet. He will fire off a bet. Ben. Call. Ben makes the call before we see what they said. Let's see what the correct answer is. The mob era. Hughes arrived in Vegas in 1966. We see what Norman had to say. Norman said mob era. He also says that he hates Ben Yu. Speaking of Ben Yu, let's see what he had to say. He said mafia. Yeah, we'll take mob era. We'll take mafia era. Both of them get it right. Both of them move on to the turn. Let us see that turn question. The famously reclusive billionaire spent four years in near total isolation in the penthouse at which Las Vegas hotel, which sat on the land that the Wynn occupies today? Answers, please. After his initial 10-day stay, the hotel asked him to check out, but instead, he just bought the property and stayed in his 250-square-foot room, usually unclothed, and conducting all his feet? business with the curtains drawn and windows and doors taped shut. That was 250 square feet, about the size of the room that Smitty is in right now. What hotel was it? And I, and I bet you Howard Hughes spent most of that time in the bathroom. Cool. All right, our answers are in. Norman, you are first to act. You can check or you can bet 800. One of these two, do we have, oh, who's left? Two of us or three of us? Two of you. Just you oh. and Ben. Oh, ben might not know this. Ben might not know this. Bet. He will bet. Ben. Call. Ben will make the call. Let's see what the correct answer is. It is the Desert Inn. Who got it right? Norman said Desert Inn. He knew it. He said Ben might know this one. Ben did know this one. Ben said the Desert Inn. Both Norman and Ben move on a machine. to the river tiebreaker with 4,200 in the middle. Let us see what that river tiebreaker is. By the mid-1970s, it's estimated that Hughes-owned casinos made up what percentage of the Nevada gaming industry? Answers, please. By the no mid-1970s, it's estimated that Hughes-owned casinos made up what percentage of the Nevada gaming industry? We do have oh, a no, hint, Norman. 
Huh? Oh, you do? It is It is a number between 1 and 100 for the percentage. Well, that's a, that's, <laughs> now, you, you, if you disgust me anymore, you would disgust me more than anyone I've ever known. Wow, and that's probably saying a lot. Like, that's a big list. I think I'm honored. I got no idea. Howard Hughes owned casinos in the mid-70s made up what percentage of the Nevada gaming industry? All right, our answers are in. Before we see what Norman and Ben had to say, let's take a look at the correct answer. That answer is 17%. In addition to the Desert Inn, Hughes also bought the Sands, the Frontier, Castaways, and Silver Slipper casinos, as well as over 30,000 acres of land in Southern Nevada. Seeing what our players weighed in with, Norman said 42%, a good 25% off the mark. If Ben gets closer than that, Ben wins this hand. Ben said 52%. He does not get closer than that. Norman Chad wins the hand. Norman Chad, our chip leader, taking a look at the chip counts. Norman has 12,900. Ben has 10,400. Smitty has 6,700 in chips, but he also has the button for this hand. Norman is in the small blind, Ben's in the big blind. Let's take a look at this next category. High stakes cash games. Smitty, you're on the button, you lead off our betting. You can race, call, or fold. This is the last hand before the final round? That is correct. That is correct, I will fold. He will lay it down on the button, preserving his 6,700 in chips. The action over to Norman Chad. And if I lay this down, then what happens? Then Ben will win this hand, and we will move on to against the house. I'm sorry. You might have to call the clock on me. I don't even know what to do. Uh, I love the clock. smell of Benny chips <laughs> in the morning. You asked for it. You got it. Barstool Smitty Who calls, snap calls the clock. He said, he right. said you might have to. <laughs> Get out your abacus. I do have an abacus. Uh, I will. Five. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll call. We'll make the call, Ben. Raise. Ben will raise it up. Well played, Ben. How about if I was putting on an incredible act because this is the category I have nailed and I'm setting you up for this three bet. I'm not three betting. It's like Stonewall. Look at these guys. They don't, they don't move. Look you're, at me. You are not three, Look up. <laughs> you are not three Look betting, so that means you're calling or folding. You're Autotron. You're Autotron. Call. What is with this kid? Norman will make the call, and Norman and Ben will go to this flop question. Which high-stakes poker commentator has hosted a variety of other TV shows, including ESPN News Road Trip? Answers, please. So, Smitty, another change in location for you? Need some juice. Need some juice. Gotta get up. Wants to change the That's mojo a little bit. I like it. What are the chances you'd ask a question in which one of the contestants is the answer? I mean, I cannot reveal what the answer to okay. that is, of course, Norman, at this time. Okay, because that would just be incredible. Would be nice. It would seem to be a big advantage for that contestant if he knew he was the answer himself. That is, that is very true. It would be even better if that contestant got it wrong. <laughs> I got to tell you something in a second. Well, we look forward to that. Yeah. Meanwhile, our answers are in. Norman, you are first to act. You can check or bet. I love the smell of Ben U chips in the morning. I will bet. He will lead out. Ben. Call. Ben will make the call. Let's take a look at the correct answer. That answer is, it is one Ali Najad. Checking in on what our players had to say. Norman had Ali Najad. That is correct. Ben had Ali Najad. That is correct. Both of them get it right. Both of them move on to the turn. Norman, did you want to say something? I, because I was doing that stupid riff with you, I typed in my own name and almost hit enter. I looked <laughs> at it again and my, my own name was sitting in the, in the box. That would have been it. great. Norman also auditioned for ESPN News Road Trip and they were like, no, we're good. Thank you very much. Uh, both Norman and Ben will move Use on. Use that joke already, Jeff. Well, it was so good the first time, Ben, I had to repeat it at least once. Let's see that turn question. We're only allowed one person on the show who uses jokes too many times. <laughs> what Gardena, California card club owner hosts the world's biggest seven card stud cash game? Answers, please. Ben Yu, the shot of the tournament. The world's biggest seven card stud cash game in Gardena, California. Which card club owner hosts it? All right, our answers are in. Norman, you are first to act. You can check or bet 800. 
That is a knock on his head, which I think signifies a check. Over to Ben. Bet. Ben will fire off a bet of 800. Norman. Raise. The check raised from Norman Chad up to 1600. Ben. Call. Ben will make the call. Let's take a look at the correct answer. That answer is Larry Flint. I would have said the name of the card club was Hustler. I think that would have given it away. Checking in on what our players had to say. Norman said Larry Flint. He got it. And Ben said Larry Flint. He also got it. Let's take a look at this river tiebreaker question. The largest televised or stream pot ever occurred during a 2018 Triton Poker Super High Roller Cash Game in Jeju, South Korea, when Tom Dwan's ace queen ran into Paul Fua's pocket aces. How much money was in the middle? Who is closest to this amount? Who takes down the pot of 5,600? Who becomes our chip leader? Ace queen for Dwan, aces for Fua, and a massive pot. All right, our answers are in before we see what Norman and Ben had to say. Let's take a look at the correct answer. That answer is $2,353,500. Who was closest? Who takes down this pot? Norman said $2.3 million. Pretty good guess. Just $53,500 off the correct answer. Can Ben get closer than that? He cannot. Ben said $1.89 million. That does it for level two. Norman Chad extends his chip lead. Our players go against the house with a spot in the finals on the line. Next. Back here on the big blind, taking a look at the chip counts. Norman Chad on top of the leaderboard. He has 15,700 in chips. Ben Yu in second with 7,600. Smitty in third with 6,700. Again, 6,700 in chips for Barstool Smitty. Now our players will be betting against the house. They are taking their stacks from the poker table to the casino, firing in the pit. On the line, a guaranteed spot in the finals for our winner. Our second place finisher is still alive to move on to those finals. We are taking our top second place finisher from our two semifinals matchups. Now our players have the option to wager as much or as little of their stack as they so choose. They will see a video featuring a hand from a tournament and a multiple choice question on what hand a player has. Oh, and I know this hand will be from the World Series of Poker main event. One of you has slightly more experience with that tournament than the other two, but Norman has been around for like 200 years, so we can't not use some of those hands. So Norman, you said that potentially you could be an answer to a question. How about just hearing your own voice? Is that good enough? Oh, I, I, I just... You, it's just a warm tingle over my body. But don't don't worry, players. Norman has no memory of this. He didn't even remember that he was on this show yesterday. So this is the time for everybody to send in your wagers. Smitty has up to 6,700 to wager. Ben has up to 7,600 to wager. Norman has up to 15,700 to wager. Yeah, you showed a World Series hand on a tiebreaker in my earlier round, which I wasn't in, and I had no recollection of the hand. And that is not surprising at all to yeah, anybody uh, here. And would have gotten it wrong. I think it was, uh, <laughs> I forgot what it was, the, what cards I had if it was uh, pulled. See, pulled, I'm telling you, raised. that was yesterday, he forgot. So you no, guys it was are two days ago. <laughs> it was two days ago. It was the first round, I had no memory of the hand, I would have gotten it wrong. All right, our wagers are in. So let us take a look at this hand from the 2016 World Series of Poker main event. Well, there's over 600K in there, so I want you to go. You cannot say anything that influences the action of the hand, saying what's in the pot. You cannot say that. Keeps saying to me you that cannot the say. Hand. You cannot say what's in the pot. Anything that influences the action, you all cannot say. Like, right. He's like, okay. like breaking all these rules, and they're not giving you a final thing. Well, uh, the decisions on you, young lady, and you don't need to uh, go I on mean, about it. I'm just World Series officials on scene to keep it within bounds. I want you to call. Oh, yeah. Good luck to you. But I did say I'll keep it friendly because it's you and it's a friendly table. If you fold and show, I will show. Keep it friendly. But I want you to call 100%. Don't want to bust out with the whole camera crew watching there. This will be embarrassing. You don't put me on this hand, I tell you. I can't say what I've got, but you do not put me on this hand. I'm, I'm not talking about my hand. How come his hand is still live when he's I'm just saying, you don't put me on this hand. That's all I said. Action's on you. Yeah, I know, but I, I mean... Action's on you. Isn't the rule tough to influence action? 
has to have within four he has. He told, he's telling me once. I will be having a discussion with this gentleman after this hand is over. At that's this fine. point, there's nothing that's out of line, but we will be having a talk. That's fine. All I said was, I'll keep it friendly. If she told so the show, I will show. I'll keep it friendly. That's fine. It's a friendly table. We're I'm just having enjoying now. ourselves. Let's stop talking until okay. this hand's over. That's fine. That's friendly. I mean, why wouldn't you want to bust me? I'm not trying to bust you. you Sir, know. I'm not going to ask you again. Okay. Just two hands ago, these two had a similar showdown. Kasuf check shoved on the turn with a straight flush, talked up a storm, and Madison correctly folded a pair of aces. I'll set our shot. I'll keep it from You're going to show me a worse hand. I'm not, but this is your last warning. You're going to get a penalty. She, she, she comes talking to me. I said nothing. She's not talking to you first. She, she She's just talking out loud, OK? You will receive the penalty if another word comes out of your mouth until the hand is finished. Will's talk is fine until they tell him it's not. Now LaFleur says he cannot talk. Tournament director Jack Ethel right on Kasuf's shoulder. Well, now he's talking without speaking. He's pushing it. I'm going to handle this one. Thank you, sir. Will has put Stacy all in. Stacy has the best hand. Hey, Floor, how about a clock? We all have to Table mate Mitch Garshowski has called the clock on Stacy. You have an active yeah. 10 second countdown. At a zero, you're long time good. You know, it's a big decision. All right, all right, slow down. Usually I'm in favor of calling the clock, but she has been under siege most of the time from Will Kasuf. I would have given her a little more room. More person does have the authority to deny a clock request. I'm going to ask you real quick. The next Did I say what? If you make one more gesture like that. Okay. I'm just trying to be friendly with the lady. No. Okay. This is not friendly. Huh? Okay. I don't, I, don't to, I don't want to see. Say you, I don't word. want to see you move. You and I are going to have a conversation okay. with this. Okay. Okay. Nine. Eight. Seven. All right, what does Madison have here? Does she have pocket aces? Does she have the ace, ten of hearts? Does she have pocket queens? Or does she have pocket nines? Answers, please. Aces, queens, nines, or the ace, ten of hearts? Facing that river bet from William Kasuf on the 5-3 deuce, a 10 rainbow board. All right, our answers are in. Let us see what Stacy Madison had. She falls. You want to see it? Yeah. Sick bluff, turn the double gutter and missed. Never mind. Nine high like a boss. No heart. Big heart of a lion. Nine high like a boss. Yeah, nine high like a boss. Kasuf said it. Norman said it. The bluff from Kasuf. But what matters here is that Stacy Madison folded pocket. Queens. So we'll save the drama for a little bit. Let's take a look at Norman Chad's answer first. Norman said, pocket queens. That is correct. How much did he wager? 300 in chips. That moves Norman to a final chip count of 16,000. So he will move on to the finals. Norman Chad is in the money. And here we go, the battle for second place. Let's look at Smitty's answer first. Smitty said, pocket nines. That is incorrect. How much did he wager? All in for every single one of his chips, 6,700. So it comes down to this. What did Ben say? Ben said pocket queens. He wagered 5,900. So Ben Yu is our second place finisher with 13,500. Barstool Smitty ends the game with zero. Smitty, I am sorry. Your time is up here. Did you enjoy the experience at least, my good man? Always, always, always. Let's go Barstool naked, Terry, carry the torch. Well, it was an absolute blast having you on the show. Ben Yu, second place with 13,500. How do you feel about that number? Um, I feel okay about it, but not super confident. All right, we'll see if Ben Yu will run into Norman Chad in the finals. Norman, somehow, some way, you did it again. You win, you're in the money. How's it feel? Feels great. I don't want to run into Ben Yu again because he'll be better next time. Watching that Kasu pan reactivated my IBS. Uh, the reason I'm doing so well is I interned on an oil rig uh, uh, one summer uh, in college in Iowa, 
And uh, I also credit my cleanse for the last 14 days. I've been drinking only Orange Crush. I'd yeah, like to unfortunately, thank my wife, Norman, Tony. we're running out of time here, but thank you so much to our players for playing today. It is Norman Chad who moves on to the finals with a shot at $15,000. Will Ben, you join it? Thank you once again to our players. Thanks to our crew, most importantly. Thanks to you all at home. I'm Jeff Platt. We'll see you next time on The Big Blind.